Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet all here present. Those are connected in Houston. Also following through YouTube with the peace of the Lord. In reverence to the world, I ask all to stand up. We're going to open the Bible and the Gospel. Luke. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, starting on verse 1. Starting on verse 1. It's going to be projected. So it was at the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from, had gone from then and were washing their nets. Then he got in one of the boats, which was Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let you the, I'll let you down the net. And when they said, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they, they signed to the partners to the other boat to come and help them, and that they came fuel boat, both boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he all who have with him astonished and catch fish with they had taken. And, and, said, and said to Jesus, Simon, do not be afraid. From now on you catch men. So when they brought the boats to the land, they forsook all the following him. As a church brethren, we did a special preparation to our lives, to our secondary life. We pray to the Lord throughout the whole month, consecrations, fasting. We did early dawn, early dawn service. We paid a price so the Lord can preserve our work, our jobs, so the Lord could open, open up doors for better work, for better jobs, so the Lord could take care of our commutes from home to work, from work to work, everywhere we commute. So we pray to the Lord, so the Lord could help us, give us victory, in all the areas in our secondary life. So the Lord could honor the plea of the church, the, the praise that we've done. And that we did all the prayers. We asked them for our, for our work environment so that the Lord could operate at that place. So there could be no accident. Thank you. And that makes that all those that are part of, of our cycle of friends, 
family members, our co-workers could be a target of prayers. And this service today especially is, is focused on that. So we can glorify the Lord for this month of victory that the Lord has given us and for all this year throughout this year until now because the Lord has been faithful. Our prayers have been have been heard from the Lord and we have seen that among all the pandemics um, in, among everything that's been against us that's, that's not going to go away anymore and, and among all these things the Lord has given us a blessing because we have seen that the hands of the Lord are extended upon our, upon our lives and we see here something interesting that Jesus was here in the beginning of his ministry beginning of the ministry and the and Lord Jesus now arrives now after work of after working all night after a, a, a whole night of unsuccessful night of fishing all the people that were that were part of that group of uh, workers fishermen they went as they always went as they always went to fish at night it's better to it's not it's, it's better to it's, john is john is here john is john is our fisherman here in the church and then they say that fishing at night is more appropriate i don't know why you know i think the fish the fishes are i think the fishes are more active but that day was a was a disaster a total disaster and when they go back in the morning the fishermen always arrive in the morning they find the people the beach full of people at that time there was no refrigerator so they would bring they would bring they would bring the fish in right there at the beach on the sand people buying it because the beach were full of people and that day there was peter his friends a group of people there they're certainly waiting for the fishermen waiting for the fishes that didn't come and in the meantime peter was there cleaning cleaning the boats doing doing all the work at the boats washing all the boats yeah you have to wash the boats and he was washing everything the nets the boats preparing for the next day to go out and not again to fish because that was their work their job and that jesus comes in the beach jesus was beginning his ministry then and he see a, a bunch of people waiting and Jesus looked to the boats and said, and then he talks to Peter. And whose boats are those? And Peter said, mine. Peter knew Jesus, more or less. Because Jesus, in the chapter 4, Jesus, Jesus had cured his mother-in-law. He was, you don't know if it was good or bad, but he cured his mother-in-law. But he saw a miracle. Peter saw a miracle of his mother-in-law. And now Jesus comes, approach him and ask him. And then and Peter said, those are my boats. And certainly, certainly Jesus asked Peter, can I use your boat? He, I, wanted to, I wanted to use your boat to to speak to all the people here. Peter says, okay. And Peter goes into the boat, in the boat, and Peter goes out a little bit off offshore with the boat, a little bit in the water, on the beach, and he starts talking with the people. So Jesus starts talking, preaching. And Peter and all the friends hearing that preach, the, the Bible doesn't say much what Jesus talked about, but we know that. But we know that he talked everything about the rain, the kingdom, 
those are the words of God for the salvation of the mankind. A, a word of hope. A word of life. And after Jesus finished that message, he turns to Peter and said, Peter, let's go a little bit further down into the high sea, to the deep, the deep part of the, the, the deep part of the sea, because he was on the shore. And he says, let's go on the deep sea, on the high sea, and there you're going to throw your net. Uh, yeah, who's from Minas? Yeah. Why? And who's from Minas? Why? why? If Daniel was there, he would say, why? We just came, we just came from a fishing all night and nothing we got. And now you want that I call again my people to go all the way down, all the way in the high sea. It, it was not like today with the engine. It was, it was uh, with the arms, with the arms. You know, there was no engine at the time. You had to paddle. And arriving over there, you want me to throw the net? Yes? You want me to cast the net? Yeah, Peter said, Peter said, yes, I will do it. I will cast the net. And you you notice something here? What did Jesus say to Peter? Who said it? What was the difference between what Jesus said and Peter said? Yeah. Nobody saw the difference. What Jesus said? Go to the high sea and cast the net to fish. But Simon answered, he said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, your word I let down the net. We see the vision of God and the vision of the man. The vision of the man goes beyond what we can imagine. The miracle of God is abundant. There's no limit for the operation of the God in our, in our lives. There's no limit of what the Holy Spirit can do here tonight. If you came here wanting, wanting something, but you can, you can come out of here with many other things, many prayers answered, with many signs from, the, from God. Sometimes I came here, you, you came here with one problem, one headache that doesn't go awake. I'm going to go there because I, I need God to open a door of work, a job, anything. But tonight, the God can operate miracle, many miracles. All we have to do is trust in what Peter said. Peter said, Peter wanted to limit what Jesus wanted to do. But the man would never, would, would never reframe God to do something. Because when, when God tells you a victory, that's your victory. When God says the, the, the door is open, you can believe the door is open. When, when the God says the cure came, the cure came. But there are many people that believe not believing in it. I believe, but I really don't believe, more or less. Many people believe like not 100%. There are many people like that, that think that way. That's not what God wants. If we understand the magic of God, if we let God operate, the Bible says the church will make miracles bigger than what the miracles Jesus did at his time. You know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Blind people saw, dead people resurrected. You see what the word guarantees us. 
we are the ones that are difficult. We are limited. Yes. And a lot of times we limit ourselves in the act of God. Jesus said, Peter, let's go to the high sea. And there you're going to cast a net through it. And they went. And so they went. And then Peter just threw it and cast the net. Peter was complicated. He just threw it, a small net. You know, when he threw it, all, the boat almost sank. Almost complicated for Peter. He had lost, he had lost a, a night of work before. Almost he lost, he's almost lost his boat. If he had lost the boat, he would be really mad. Brandon, we see two situations here. The life of the man without Jesus in the life of the man with Jesus. This text is everything for us. This text for, for a believer is everything that he needs to hear. We see the work. I, I wanted to write here, but my, my handwriting is so bad. That's called, he wrote fish, fishing and work. Fishing on one side and work on the other side. With Jesus. Without Jesus. Without Jesus first. And then with Jesus. What happened before Jesus came? And what time they were fishing at the time? <laughs> the children are knowing better. The children answering. Fishing at night. The result was nothing. A disaster. I, can, I would imagine if he, he... He had talked to the people that he didn't fish anything that day. He had to admit that he was on the negative side. He was losing money that day. No, it was difficult. He had to go through all this because he didn't catch anything. So to had to, to tell the the wife and family that he didn't catch anything it was bad. So many live in this situation today. Many, many parents, many ladies, many young people live like that. that nothing works. They try, they try, and they fail. The more, the more you are a better worker, excellent professional, we know that. That's why we say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, preserve our work, our jobs. Pres Preserve the open door because although you're a good worker, produ producing more, reaching all the targets, everything, everything, you could be, could, you could be graduated everywhere, FSU, Harvard, everywhere, but you cannot count sometimes the, the the credits that you have because sometimes there are things that happen in your life that's beyond the knowledge, beyond your reach, beyond your reach. You could be a, a doctor, a surgery doctor, the best surgery doctor with all the machines, everything, a car accident. If you, if you have an accident, 
that you're driving, you know, with all the care you drive carefully, always in, in the limit, but then there's a crazy guy that comes, a drunk person, a responsible person that doesn't think tomorrow, that doesn't think about anything, and then crashes in you, crashes in you. And then you, in this accident, you almost die. The, ma the doctors will take you, you have to amputate your hands or your legs. What do you do now? That's beyond. Those are situations that we have to face that we don't have control. That's why the power of prayer. That's why the church prays instant, insistently. Preserve, Lord. Preserve our life. Preserve our people. Because these are moments that we are failing, that the Lord operates. The night talks about everything. The people that live in the darkness, and desperate, uncertain, and dangerous. We don't know what they're doing. And the night talks about the sin. Taking their lives anyway, without worrying with his spiritual life, without worrying his, with his soul, because the soul we have was was lended by God. The soul we have is what makes us different from the animal. What we receive from God is present. We are keepers of a soul, eternal soul. And this, and this soul is to go back to heaven, to go back to God, because it's, it came from there. And, and people live in their lives in any way without, without worrying about anything. And there comes depression, this, you know, sickness, because people cannot fulfill that emptiness, which is the lack of God in their lives. People are desperate their lives. They take their lives uh, because they're living in the moment of darkness and certainty. And when people live like that, the failure is, is certain. The disillusion. It's certain. It's a certain. It, it's a failure. You insist, you insist with everything, but that's, but that's not what resolves. What resolves is the presence of God. Jesus will not arrive in the boat. He, he used the Peter's boat to fish people, and he wants to use your life. He wants to live in your heart, and he wants, through you, reach others. Jesus wants to do that. He wants to come in into your heart. He wants to live in your heart. He wants you to change your life. And, and that tonight, you can be a servant of the Lord that you can start to trust in the God. The miracle happened. But before the miracle happened, God uses Peter's boat to speak to all. So the word of Lord, and, and many were there trying to listen to the word of God. Many were going behind him after Jesus because they saw what he had done. And many people don't open their hearts so that can, Jesus can go in. No, it's not the time. No, I'm going to do it myself. I can do it. I don't need prayers. I don't need this. I don't need that. Yes, I'm a good worker. I'm okay. Sometimes, yeah, it works. But there's going to be a moment that you're not going to have a solution. Yeah, what happened with Peter? He was a great fisher. He was a great fisherman. He knew everything. And when Jesus talks to Peter, cast the net. 
Peter could have doubted it. He judged it, but he judged it in his own way. In his own way. And now everything happened when Jesus appears, when he uses Peter as a, as a bridge to bless others. So the word of God could bring a deliverance. The word of the Lord could bring a hope to many of those. And now he said to Peter, cast a net. Peter said, and, he's, and he saw that many, many fishes. Many people, many fishes that he, they had to call. Simon. And he called him. And he called who? Who did he call? And he called all the fish. He called all the fishermen. He called his co-workers. I can imagine all this shouting. Peter. Peter was almost desperate because the boat was about to sink. So many, so many fishes. They call everything. They call everyone. They call all the fishermen. And, and then when many came, when they do, and they, what they do? They, they cast all the nets. And the promise of Lord had come through. What God says, it's always, it's always a promise. It always comes through. There's no way we can escape from that because the word of God is power. There's power in the word of God. And all those who benefit, all those who Jesus was not a fisherman. He was a carpenter. He had no, no idea how to fish. Not, not even the best place to fish. To fish. Today it's easier. It's even There's GPS today. There's everything so you can see where the fish are. Today it's easy to fish. At that time there was nothing like this. It was a knowledge that's all and luck. But Jesus was there. Because it was him who did all those things. He was present with the Father. When the Father said, Let's do the man, ours. Let's do everything. Jesus was there when the Father said, Oh. Certainly he ordered all the fish to to come to come there. And the miracle happened. That's why that's what happened when Jesus is in our life, in our professional life. When Jesus is present in our work, in our school, at church, the miracles happen. It's our life. It starts to be better, a little bit better. No. You have to go back to work. You have to do it. No, some people think that now that you're a believer, the miracle will come to you. No, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to do everything. They had to go back there, the fishermen. There's a teaching that they're like to wait for tomorrow. No, it's today. Peter, let's go back. Take them to the high sea. And the blessing came. So God wants to show us that there's a form of us to be victorious. There's a way for us to see the miracle of God. All you have to do is, is to hear the, to hear the voice of the Spirit. You have, all you have to do is open your heart and let the Spirit, Holy Spirit operate. And you see how beneficial that is, how it's less tiring to have a life based on what Jesus is talking about. Every night, 
casting it, let down the net. Imagine all night doing this with Jesus. It was like right away, Peter threw it here, let down the net right here, and the miracle happened. And that's what Jesus wants to do, what God wants to do to us, what Lord has promised to his people. That's why many times serve the believers they're like silly they're, they're seen as a silly people singing through all this because we have peace the peace that the world doesn't have the security that the world does not have the happiness that the joy that the world doesn't have the certainty of the eternal life that the world doesn't have that's what makes the believer different no we're not better we're, we're, we're the worst because we depend on Jesus. The, 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 those who don't believe don't need Lord, but we need Lord because we are no one. We're nothing. We are nothing without Jesus on our, in our boat. We wouldn't be anybody if it was for Jesus to die for us, to give us a salvation. And tonight you came here. You have been You've been, uh, you've, been a, you've, you've been the focal point for our prayers, for what we pay, so can, God can bless you, like the friends of Peter were blessed, and everyone that were, were there around at that beach were blessed, because, because free we receive and free we give. The salvation in Jesus is free. There's no price because the price is already paid. Now you need to open your heart and let Jesus in because now he wants to use you. The same way he has used the brethren from church, the church to announce the word of God, Jesus wants to use you. So others, they are part of his cycle of friendship, work, can receive a blessing from God. Is that what you want? Do you want to have a life with Jesus? Do you want to let Jesus enter in your life, in your work, in your wedding, in your health? Open your heart and let's sing a song. And you're going to speak with, with God. Like Peter. Like Peter said, it's, it's hard, Lord, but I believe you. Blessed be the name.
Lord Jesus, bless be the name of the Lord. That's the peace that we, is that the peace you're looking for? You're only going to find it in the presence of the Lord Jesus, in the presence of God. The Lord showed while we're praying for the service, the Lord gave us some gift, spiritual gift. It's a form of God speaking to us. Same way he speaks through the Bible, through the church, the prophets. God today uses the gifts, the spiritual gifts, manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And God showed that a man that came here tonight, ask, following your invitation from someone, he had suffered an, a car accident not too long ago. And God said, this accident, the deliveries, the deliverance that you had from from dying, is because God has a salvation project for you, a project of salvation. This accident deliverance was in answers of prayers that were done for your life. The God at that moment preserved you so you can have an encounter with Jesus because God is, has a pleasure when someone surrenders to Him. God, God, God is pleased when you open your heart for Him to go in. It's not being part of a member. It's membership in church. It's when you give your life to Jesus. It, when you start to live under the control of God, under His control. When you start to live your life seeking and praying to God, when you do that, God is pleased because you see the power of God. And everything He speaks, Peter is there. It's going to happen. That's why we, we are always concerned about consulting the Lord seeking for the direction of the Lord. Everything that's done is done in the, the, the orientation of the Lord because that's the only way that we can get it right. When the heart enters, when the feeling, the flesh, the desire, the, the heart is sinful. We make a lot of mistakes when we, we start to do things based on our, on our will. But every time that you, that you do everything under the control of God, there's not, there's not going to be a mistake. There's not going to be a failure because God is stronger. He's stronger than everything. Amen? Let's stand up, please.
bendito seja o nome do Senhor. Glória a Jesus. Senhor Deus, nesta hora nós queremos God, this time we want to glorify your name because it's good, Lord. When you when you are present among us, we want to glorify you, Lord, because we are privileged to have a living God, a God that speaks, that communicates with his people. We're privileged because we have been We've been, we've been most, you've been merciful to us, and your grace is everything we need. And that's why tonight we meet here tonight, Lord, to express our gratitude, everything we feel for you, everything you've done, your miracles, for the cures, for the doors that have been opened, for everything that you have operated not only in our lives but in all those who are part of our work our family members friends our dear friends we glorify because we know Lord that until now you have helped us nothing we have not we have not lacked anything you are the cause that we are not consumed. Received our prayer, our songs, and give us a week, a victorious week in your presence. Is the pray we do. Thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Jesus, Savior, and the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured upon us now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, well, we are saying goodbye to the brethren from Houston. The workers there can start to assist and we, we, uh, we greet all with the peace of the Lord. If you wish to have a prayer any any explanation of what was talked here we are here in your available to pray for you the motive of the month of august it's been posted in our groups please be attentive to all that tomorrow we start a new motive in favor of our neighbors the prayers it's important that the lord speaks to a family that's believes to continue to pray for a, a, a lady pray because the Lord wants to save her and it's taking long amen it's in the project for Lord it's in the time of Lord for God his time it's not a, it's not our time so if God promised to save let's continue to pray in the right time God will act to all peace of Lord amen Peace the Lord, Cameron. Peace the Lord, David.